So we directly move on. The next presentation is being presented by Jörg Blechschmidt. Jörg Blechschmidt is working at DB Systel, and there he's the product owner of Digital Foresight. And he's talking about quantum computing at Deutsche Bahn and how it started. Okay, thank you, Lukas. Uh, let me share my screen with you, which will take a moment. Oh, okay. That should be working now. Perfect. Yeah, let's, let's start. Um, well, at this quantum summit, we've heard a lot on what companies should do on a very, very general level. And I would like to share with you a practical example of how a large corporation has set out to make quantum computing accessible. It is an example that is not necessarily representative. Nevertheless, I believe that many elements are required common. So see it as an inspiration to your work. The year is 2017. Deutsche Bahn has a team uh, that analyzes digital trends to provide early guidance for future robust strategic decisions. In 2017, quantum computing appears on its radar for the first time. Um, we heard that BMW um, started in 2017, as was mentioned this morning, um, but I, I don't know if uh, you were already looking at this technology by the time. It was a time when it was picked up by media uh, in lots of reports and something like a small hype started back then. Deutsche Bahn's digital foresight team provided clarity by analyzing and evaluating the trend from the specific perspective of Deutsche Bahn, not on a general level, but very specific to our demands. And how can we imagine such an evaluation? Two aspects of the trend are important for Deutsche Bahn. One is the assessment of economic potential with the question, how important is quantum computing to Deutsche Bahn? Evaluation is based on a 10-year horizon. Um, and the other question concerns maturity. How easy is it today to take advantage of the opportunities of a trend, in this case, quantum computing? If we look at the assessment criteria, um, especially for business value or start with business value, we see an assessment that is essentially based on financial figures, its revenue, its earnings. Disruption potential is also assessed in terms of lost revenue. In addition to this, uh, the category regulatory aspects takes into account uh, the highly regulated market in which Deutsche Bahn operates. So on top of those very general uh, criteria, they have even very specific aspects. The evaluation is thus made purely on the basis of concrete application benefits. Quantum computing must therefore always compete with alternative solutions. Maturity is very similar. Uh, with the technical maturity being only one aspect. As users, of course, we would prefer to buy a robust product that integrates seamlessly into our existing systems. Maturity, therefore, assesses progress along this way. How large is the product range? Do the individual products play together? Are there consulting and services that can be purchased, etc.? In addition, we look and what comparable companies are doing, which is also an indicator of applicability. Not surprisingly, quantum computing did not achieve a high evaluation in 2017. Our recommendation at this time was uh, to keep this technology on the radar, but not to uh, get, get active. It wasn't until 2019 that we looked that we took the first steps. But here too, the focus was on the benefits of the application. For us, this meant not setting the scope too narrowly, but looking broadly at several innovative compute technologies. Consequently, we scanned the market and compared different technologies in an initial assessment. This was the result of our analysis. 
We then carried out a couple of small projects with the four highlighted technologies for better evaluation. Our focus was on technologies that were close to commercialization. However, we also looked at other technologies in which we saw high potential in the medium and long term. Um, you might also be interested in the following talk by Andreas Hohenfelder on the secrets of getting ahead, uh, one of our cooperation partners here. How do we assess quantum computing today? We see great progress in technology and ecosystem, but still at a low level. Having said that, we need to be aware that quantum computing is still far from a pure engineering problem. There remain fundamental challenges that require solutions we don't even know today. So uh, even though it's uh, the, the, the dot for quantum computing moves to the center of this radar, it's no guarantee that it reaches the established zone. Nevertheless, Deutsche Bahn has left the role of the observer. We built up a small team and we started sm uh, first small activities. And that's a slide what the team, on what the team is doing today. Top level, the corporate strategy of Deutsche Bahn, starke Schiene, which means strong rails, calls for a dramatic increase in transport capacities. Since investments in infrastructure take many years, optimal management of available capacities is crucial. The other aspect, of course, is security, network security, data transmission, which is challenged by quantum computing. And on the other hand, quantum computing can help in, de in detecting network attacks. The team contributes to the Plan QK program and is closely connected with industry and SEO associations. And as motivated by the previous slides, it does not focus only on quantum computing, but works with a range of technologies and solution approaches. Uh, if you like to understand more on what Deutsche Bahn is doing, uh, then please attend the talk at 1.20 p.m. on stage pop, the strategic relevance of quantum computing for logistic companies. To conclude, what is quantum computing from a user's perspective? Quantum computing is an extension of the compute solution spectrum and must therefore compete with all alternatives. Ultimately, we need robust functioning products. We need end-to-end -end value chains, business ecosystems, and last but not least, qualified quantum computing experts and related specialists. And um, Important from the trend perspective of our course is not to look kind of inside out from how from quantum computing and how this will develop, but also keep an eye on the competing technologies and there are quite a few around um, which might even develop uh, faster than quantum computing. With that, I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Jörg, for the insight. So um, I have a lot of questions. So the first question is you, you described very comprehensive and in detail looking back how the quantum computing or quantum technologies roadmap evolved within DB Systel and Deutsche Bahn in general. Could you give us some insights or some strategic um, thoughts on the horizon? What do you expect for the next years to come? Where does quantum computing stand in this technology clustering roadmap in two years and five years or in 10 years? Mm -hmm. um, two aspects to highlight. Uh, one is I'm not as optimistic as some others here in this, in this round. When they talk five to ten years, then we might see the first applications um, in, in maybe the chemical industry, but not really in, in our use cases, which are highly complex. Um, so we are all maybe more on the long side, eight to ten or even longer, depending on um, technology developments. And the other aspect, of course, it's not solely about quantum computing. To get the benefits out of it, you have to integrate this in your systems. You have to have the, the data available, accessible, um, maybe real time, uh, time data, etc. And with complex uh, problems, this is a challenge by itself. Mm -hmm. 
So could, us, could you give us some insights into the technology associations or the ecosystem associations you gave, the discussions ongoing there? As you said, you described yourself or Deutsche Bahn and DBC Stella as more skeptical when it comes to um, the concrete um, roadmap of the technology being ready. So how are, this, are these, those discussions going on the different uh, associations or ecosystems you mentioned? Well, uh, the, the, the view in the, in the future is always problematic because whatever you, you say is wrong and on, on a big, uh, big part you can really change the future. And I think these um, associations are a big part of it. But if we join forces, if we combine information, if, if we work on problems together and push technologies and as end users, I mean, then we are the market, right? Um, if there is no market demand, technology will slow down. Um, so we are, we are part of driving this, this uh, process and uh, the associations play a valuable role in this, an important role and even more they, they give each of us individual firms a, a, a louder voice um, when it comes to making our needs uh, present to, to politics, uh, to uh, to, to the startups and, and all the other players in this ecosystem. Uh, you also touched a good point, which could be my next question. The next question is about um, recommendations. You mentioned politics, but also my question would be, what would you, what would you recommend to policymakers, but also to the supply side of quantum computing, like all the stack, hardware, software, um, ecosystem, what are your recommendations to them to really bring the things forward um, as f fast as possible and um, use case centric as f uh, possible to really bring value and solutions to the market as you described very interestingly, not talking about technology too much, talking about solutions for end users or B2B end users. Okay. This is a question for the next two hours, so if I have the time, of course, I will... We have five minutes, so five, in five minutes. Uh. <laughs> um, to keep it short, I think it's, um, we have to get the right incentives, right? It's, we have to understand that um, technology development and research is important, but it's only a first step in this full stream of, of activities that are needed. and. I believe the, the strongest incentive is from real business, from companies that are interested, companies who are willing to um, to even invest uh, themselves. And then BMW again was a good uh, example. Tomorrow was set up two chairs in this field, uh, which is a, a strong statement into the market. And we need more of this. Uh, we need the dynamics. Um, from the turn perspective, um, it, it always put your bets on where the money is. Right. So, and the money is not just from 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 the state, uh, which is typically highly regulated. It's more real business, and we have to get in this business thinking and in, in everything we do. That's very helpful too. So, maybe um, one last uh, question um, regarding. Um, Deutsche Bahn and logistics in general, where do you see good examples from, you mentioned it too, like uh, competition at some point, one could say, where do you see good examples in logistics already being discussed in Germany, but maybe also in Europe or all over the world from competitors of yours, uh, of Deutsche Bahn, or to inspire you and um, um, when you think about uh, logistic use cases uh, or mobility use cases at Deutsche Bahn? Yeah, we're doing this already, and Andreas, the next uh, talk, will, will mention my, my, one example of that. Um, we're working with uh, all these quantum-inspired solutions. Uh, as I, I show, we, we tested a um, real use case that, uh, with the, with the D-Wave, uh, Quantum and Nila, and um, there are today already smaller use cases where these uh, intermediate technologies have uh, proven successful. And there are, and, and we know that not only Deutsche Bahn is doing that, but uh, a couple of other companies also. Oh, that's also very interesting. So you're talking also about your view is also that there's a continuum from HPC quantum inspired technologies to real quantum computing during the next years. Definitely, and from the user's perspective, it's not about technology. Technology, yeah. it's about solutions. Yeah. That was a very good concluding statement. Thanks a lot, Jörg, for your very interesting presentation and the discussion after uh, your presentation. We had together. Yeah. See you soon.